peace. We are back. It's been a while, but we're back from a little hiatus, and we are back appropriately at Bush Gardens Williamsburg here in Virginia. We're back at Bush Gardens Williamsburg because they have announced that they are having a special event, Coasters and Craft Brews, select dates from August 6th through August 16th, um, limited capacity event. Tickets are still available online. The free member passes have sold out, but there are still tickets available for purchase. And Bush Gardens invited us out a few days before the event to show you guys some of the special enhanced security and safety measures that they put into place. Things like face coverings and temperature checks. We actually just had our temperature checked at the gate um, to make you feel safe to come back to the park, check out this cool event, Coasters and Craft Brews, right? Like that sounds totally up my alley. And it's good to be back. It's good to be back with you guys. And uh, let's go check it out. Okay, check it out. Temperature screening. We're about to get our temperature screened again. Uh, face coverings required. All guests, two and older, have to get their face, have to wear a face covering, as well as the temperature screening. So we're about to get our temperature screened now. He's got that little gun thing that he's gonna point at my forehead. And we'll show you how that looks. Pretty painless. Well, I'm showing you with that guy. Pretty painless. All right, let's take a look. All right. Good morning. Good morning. You're good to go. Good 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 good. Thank you so much. Gotta tell you guys, I have missed this view. We are in Bush Gardens right now, a very empty Bush Gardens because there's only four of us here at this event. Uh, they are staggering the event throughout the day. The Eagles are doing fine, in case you're wondering. We're walking into France. We're on our way to hang out at the Griffin roller coaster. And uh, as you can see, no Halloween decorations up or anything like that. But still cool to come into the park again and just kind of see how everything looks. We are standing under Griffin right now. Griffin, of course, one of the coasters that will be available during Coasters and Craft Cruise. Okay, so as we approach Griffin, wanted to show you some of the signs that you'll see outside of the rides. Watch for the markings. You can see one right there. Social distancing markings, stay six feet away. Face coverings required. There's your physical distancing. Clean your hands often. They're gonna have hand sanitizer, restrooms, hand wash stations throughout the park, and they will have seating capacity limitations on the rides. And speaking of hand sanitizer, it's right here behind the sign. Some of the physical distancing signs that they have throughout the park and throughout the queues. Please wait here. We are in the queue for Griffin. You can see they're training right now, getting ready for opening here in a few days. There is another hand sanitizer right here as you enter the queue. Before we get into the interview with Bush Gardens Park President Kevin Lempke, we just wanted to give you the deets, the Cliff Notes version of what you're about to hear. First of all, temperature checks are required. If you're 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, you're able to enter the park. This is for employees and for guests. Secondly, face coverings are required for anyone ages two and older throughout the park. There are break areas in case you need a break and want to take your mask off. And if you're eating or drinking actively, you don't need to have your mask over your face. Physical distancing of six feet or two meters is required between guest parties. Next up, be clean. The park will be sanitizing frequently. Also, there are hand wash stations and hand sanitizer throughout the park, so make sure to use them frequently. If you feel sick, stay home. This is true for employees and guests of the park. Get it? Got it? Good. All right, back to the show. So yeah, appreciate everybody being here. You know, it's exciting to be able to announce Busch Gardens Williamsburg uh, opening for our limited capacity special event, uh, Coasters and Craft Brews. So within Virginia's phase three guidelines, we're able to uh, open on a limited basis with uh, you know, capacity restrictions. And what the guests will see is a lot of new enhanced safety uh, 
and, and cleanliness protocols. You know, we have a very stringent program already in place, and our guests, you know, know Bush Gardens for, for being safe, clean quality, uh, but a whole extra layer of uh, protocols in place based on, you know, the current, current guidelines. So face masks and face coverings are required for all guests to and up. All of our team members will be in face coverings as well. Uh, everyone coming on site, whether it's our team members or guests, will be required to have their temperature screened. And physical distancing will be happening throughout the park. So uh, a lot of different signage, uh, markings on the ground to ensure that folks are staying uh, distanced uh, through their visit, and we can walk through those in detail. But uh, what we want to make sure, too, is that you're getting uh, the authentic Bush Gardens experience. So, but we want to do it in a safe way, and that's what our team has been working so hard on. And um, so, we're looking forward to welcoming you know both our team and our guests back uh, this week. You talk about that phase three, uh, the phase three wall, the people that open up that limited capacity. Is it that one thousand number that the governor had earlier mentioned? Yep. So the the thousand patron cap on public amusement and entertainment is what we're operating. I know initially. You know, all have said they may not work for you all, but how did you all decide we're going to make, make this work for a thousand people? Sure. Yeah, you know, we, we'd of course love to be operating at, uh, you know, more normal uh, capacity, and, and we, you know, said that, you know, in order to do so, to open the whole park, it would require uh, a higher count. So this uh, limited event in a, a section of the park allows us to do so in a way that, you uh, can meet those uh, current capacity restrictions, but provides us a way to you know still operate and really offer a very diverse amount of uh, experiences for the park. You'll have high thrill coasters, uh, our Clydesdales, our, our wolves, um, other animal encounters, uh, some of our famous barbecue at our Trapper Smokehouse. So even though it is a, a section of the park, uh, a really great way to offer uh, diverse experiences to our guests. Uh, it will not. So uh, the guests will enter through uh, the main uh, turnstiles in England and then make their way to Scotland, Ireland, France, and New France. And those are the sections of the park that will be in. And this event goes through the 16th, right? Uh, yes. Uh, it's 6 eight, yeah. Will there be another planned event probably after that one? Or uh, so we're, we're, looking, we're looking at additional opportunities now uh, so um, you know we're excited to kick this off on Wednesday but uh, looking at additional ways to, to take the experience you know beyond this event. Now who's all allowed uh, during that time period? Is it just past season pass holders or who's all allowed? Sure so uh, your your membership and, and other season passes uh, admission is included you do need a reservation regardless of the ticket type uh, but we have tickets available for the general public as well, so that can be found on our website. Uh, but, but again, regardless of, of what ticket product you're using, uh, reservations will be required, and those are limited to the capacity. So, in regards to this specific event, right, craft brews, obviously, um, how, with the facial coverings, will guests, will they be able to walk around with the craft brews, or will they have to stay stationary? while drinking. Yep, so um, our policy is if you're actively eating or drinking, you can you can remove your mask temporarily. Um, but you do need to be actively, you know, eating and drinking. It's not, you know, just carrying it around or things of that nature. Um, and then in our dining areas where you'll be seated, uh, you're able to remove your mask at that time. Uh, we do also have uh, a few zones set in the park that are relaxation zones that uh, we will have distancing measures in place uh, where you will be able to go to that zone, take your mask off for a time and, and, and take a break with that. Uh, but we will ensure that unknown parties are not grouped together in those areas. Is the tram going to be available or is it all the parking going to be able to yeah, all, all the parking will be in the England parking lot, and you'll be uh, 
entering our temperature check at the Eng England arrival, and then making your way uh, across the bridge and down to the down to the main bridge. But all guests would enter through the main toll plaza uh, and then be directed into the England parking lot. Forgive me, Brad. Yep. But just want to make sure. So at the entire park not be open to specific sections, correct? Correct. Okay. The Bush Gardens a, a, as a whole, you know, remains closed based on the restrictions. Uh, this is an opportunity to open a portion of the park uh, to offer these experiences. Now, and going back to it earlier, the financially, will that impact you all virtual at all? Just opening a small section for a limited amount of time? Uh, you know, we, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to welcome guests and team back in a way that makes sense for us right now, and we'll continue to operate within the guidelines provided, and those, you know, if those evolve and change or, or increase, uh, then, you know, we'll look at opportunities to expand on this, uh, but this is what makes sense for us right now. Well, if you get to this point, I mean, obviously, we, we're still in this pandemic, we, didn't, we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation, but you all never think like we're going to be able to open this year, this season, if you all think? You know, we remained optimistic. Uh, we have a great relationship with, uh, you know, the state team in Richmond, and we stayed in close contact with them, collaborating on, you know, what what this reopening could possibly look like, um, and and really communicate all the safety guidelines that and plan that we wanted to put in place. And, uh, you know, we take it very seriously. We want our guests to have fun, but we absolutely want to do it in a safe way. And so we crafted a, a plan based on you know the, the state guidelines, and we're thrilled to be able to, to get to this point. And uh, just can't wait to let uh, let our guests see it. So we found a lot of the policies and procedures that happen in Tampa are helping you guys reopen. Yeah, we have very consistent policies, you know, across parks. Um, of course, we tweak those based on state guidance. So what may apply in Florida, you know, versus Virginia, uh, or other states may be a little bit different. But overall, uh, the company has a very consistent policy across all the parks. And if they found anything, I don't know if there's any like anecdotes or any interesting things that have come out of, say, the parks that have already opened and how they're handling the rides. Or sure. Yeah. You know, things evolve almost daily. You know, as as you learn new things, and certainly from the time they first open. Um, so as they adapt of things that are working or, or maybe not working, uh, we take those and adapt them to our policy as well. So we, we really do benefit from having that guidance from parts that are already offered. So in getting ready for um, this event, we have made modifications to the rides that will be open when it comes to queuing and getting in line. You, will, you probably noticed as you came through, for those of you that have ridden Griffin before, we are directing you specifically through the queue line. You'll notice there are modifications made in the queue lines to uh, account for social distancing. And then one of the other enhancements that we've made is we've added a line manager position prior to each station, prior to where you get onto the ride itself. Um, and that person is going to be responsible for putting the guests in line. So before you used to come in, you just go straight into whatever line you wanted. That's changed. You're going to come in and we're going to go, how many are in your party? You have three? Okay, I'm going to ask you to go to the first dot, right in front of that gate, follow this path right here. Next group, you have three people. Okay, I'm going to ask you to go to the next dot, but when you go to board, save two seats between you and the party in front of you. Here in Griffin, we're able to load each row, but we're saving two seats between each party. That's a little different. That's um, and being applied at each location, depending on the nature of the ride. Um, but here at Griffin, it's two between each party to maintain that social distancing while riding. We also have hand sanitizers at the entrance of the attraction. As you go through the queue line, prior to boarding, and then at the exit of the, of the ride as well when you're leaving. And we're encouraging guests through spiel and through conversation with that line manager to encourage guests to utilize the hand sanitizer prior to boarding and once they exit. You can see the team behind you is um, Wiping down the trains, we do have um, more frequent sanitiz sanitization um, at the attraction. We're using an eco-friendly, um, eco-lab, peroxide-based um, disinfectant, and that'll be used for, uh, periodically throughout the event, frequently. Deep clean. I'm sorry, that deep clean. Oh, and the deep, sorry, the deep clean at the end of every um, four-hour event, because we do have doubles on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we will do a deep clean. 
where we have this right here, which is a pump sprayer. We'll also utilize this throughout the day with our frequent cleaning at the attraction. But at the end of the night, we're going through and we're doing every touch point. We're doing all the rails, we're going through trash can lids, all the way through the entire attraction. Um, and then we'll come in the next day and we'll be ready. So it's not a clean every time somebody gets off? No, ma'am, but we, it is more frequent than what you would see before. So the idea is that you can sanitize before they get on and after? Yes, yes. We have a partnership with our guests, just like safety. Um, at any other, any other time of year, we, we rely on our guests to, to help us with that. I know you just, of course, mentioned the Griffin here. Yes. And I'm not, I don't know if right now, we have to still, I guess, what other roller coasters you may have opened? Loch Ness Monster will be open, as well as Invader. Those are the two other, and then Finnegan's Flyer is open. We'll have Little Flies, as, which is a children's attraction, mm -hmm. as well as Catapult, which is right by Invader and Invader. So, the Loch Ness is recognized to every, Yes. So how we will do that? Will it still be the same? It'll be the same. There will be, again, a line manager before you enter that station area where you get to board. And we will be filling the queue house, the station house, by that line manager. Meaning we're going to put the front couple, couple rows in, then we're going to go to the back. Our goal is to not pass people so that we can fill the stations and stalls for the next train as that other train is getting checked and leaving. So that is a little different. Usually you can come in and pick the front row. You may have to wait in line a couple times to get the front row because if you're going to be directed as to where you'll be seated. So here's another look at some of those social distancing markers. Another hand sanitizer here as you make your way to the front row of Griffin. So as you can see in the queue, there, there's more hand sanitizer. There are markings throughout to help with the social distancing and keep the queue limited. So obviously one of the first questions you're asking is, are face coverings required? Yes, face coverings are required as you walk through the park. As you just heard park president Kevin Limpke say, if you're actively drinking or eating or sitting at a table in a dining establishment, you don't need to wear a face covering. We are making our way to Axe Alley, I mean, New France right now to Trapper Smokehouse, one of the most popular restaurants here in the park. It's also been featured on Food Network. And we're making our way here to get a look at some of the safety enhancements that they've put into place at the dining establishments. One thing I didn't mention before is that contactless payment is strongly encouraged here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Here's our safety uh, distance markers as we make our way into Trapper's Smokehouse. As you enter Trapper's Smokehouse, you can see there's more signs, more hand sanitizer, safe distance markings in the queue, and another hand sanitizer as you enter and exit the door. When was the last time you saw Trapper's Smokehouse without a line, right? Yeah, I, that's one. But here's the queue. You can see it's definitely set up to be distanced. As you wait here, there are more cues and markers inside. So a few changes that you'll see when it comes to dining at the park. Uh, as far as the distancing measures, those will be very consistent whether you're visiting a restaurant, visiting a ride. Uh, you'll see similar markings on the ground. You'll see some similar signage. Um, hand sanitizer stations will be frequent. Um, but what you'll see in the seating area to ensure distancing is uh, either spreading tables out to meet the, the six foot requirement, or in some cases, making certain tables unavailable to ensure that we can, we can spread different families out. So um, you can know that you're dining, you know, with your party, but then the next party will not, you know, be within, uh, be within a short distance. We've made some changes to our service styles as well. So. Anything where a guest would actually be engaging with the food, grabbing plates, other things, that has been removed. And it'll be relying upon our team to serve. Uh, reusable cups, uh, drink program, etc. If guests have a drink program already, they are welcome to bring their cup. 
but they can't use that cup at the soda fountains, they will be given their drink in a disposable cup and they can then transfer that to their reusable cup. So again, to reduce you know, the, the community usage of, of high touch point areas. Um, we do have our full complement of menu here at the Smokehouse, so uh, no, no limitations there. Uh, we encourage contactless payment. Uh, we take Apple Pay and other things that, uh, of that nature. We do have plexiglass shields for our team members who will be uh, ringing up. And all guests and, uh, and employees, again, will be required to wear face coverings up until they get to their seat. At that point, they can take their face covering off in order to eat. So will other restaurants be open? You mentioned the, I think, four countries that were going to be four or five countries that were open for coasters yeah. and craft brews yeah. so like rogan's pub and and yeah. those other locations so rogan's pub brady's drinks uh our uh our france cook market mm -hmm. here and then the smokehouse will be the main culinary location and then retail will work very similarly so from what you see in retail uh you know at, at stores now or a grocery store again markings on the ground uh, plexiglass barriers, um, contactless payment, you know, face mask required. We will limit any indoor capacities uh, as far as uh, number of patrons go. Uh, so the 50% on indoor dining, for example, uh, that would apply to us as well. So any indoor location that has an occupancy level, uh, we will ensure that that is less than 50 but predominantly our outdoor, or I'm sorry, our dining opportunities are all out. As he mentioned, here are the safe distancing markers in the park. And you can see they're staggered so that you're not next to each other. Even though these are currently set up that it looks like you would normally grab your food like you normally would, instead, they're gonna be handing the food to you. Same menu that you can always get here in Trapper Smokehouse. And even though it's not even open, it still smells good in here for some reason. And as you exit, condiments and cutlery are available upon request to, you know, not so that you're not like grabbing things, uh, reduce, you know, kind of everyone grabbing at the same thing. More hand sanitizer, plexiglass shield. They've really instituted a lot of new measures. So here's what they've done to close off some of the tables to help enable the physical distancing. These tables are kind of covered. You can sit here, you can sit over there, and you can sit over there. They've got another large area over there that they're working on uh, doing the same thing. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you liked the look at the new security and safety measures that they've put in here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. You can get more information at buschgardens.com. You can also buy tickets to Coasters and Craft Brews, as well as get further announcements on any other events that may be coming up during the season. And of course, keep it on iomgeek.com. Make sure you subscribe to here, hit the notification button. We're going to keep you informed. We're going to have weekly videos going on from here on out. Obviously, we took a little break. There wasn't much going on. Things are starting to go on now. We've got some cool stuff to talk to you about, cool stuff to show you. So make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you check back here. Make sure if you're interested in Bush Gardens to check out their website. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.